Hi, Lonnie. Thanks for taking the time to speak with me today. Hey, Haley. How's it going? Thanks so much for having me. It's a, it's a pleasure to chat with you. Appreciate it. Happy related birthday. What did you Thank do you. for your birthday? Uh, it, yeah, with the whole pandemic situation, didn't really do too much, but it was a really good birthday nonetheless. I, I just spent a lot of time at home, uh, or all of it at home, essentially, just with my wife, Rita. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we, we played Harry Potter Clue, which I got for Christmas. It's a board game, so <laughs> that was pretty fun. Uh, we made some lobsters, which was great. Uh, really special Yeah, that's dinner. my mom's favorite food. It's awesome. Yeah, it was yeah. our first time like making it ourselves, you know. Yeah. Like, we really felt like adults, like making yeah. lobster at home. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it tasted really good and it, it was super messy. There was like butter flying all over the place, but it, it was a good time. Yeah. So it was a good birthday. I'm 29 now. I'm really feeling, like I said, I'm feeling like an adult, feeling yeah. like I'm not I mean, a kid anymore. <laughs> yeah, I'm 25, so. Okay, well, you're not far behind. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it was a good birthday. Thank you. It's, it was fun. You said you got a sleep max for your birthday. How do you like it? <laughs> yeah, did, did you watch my live stream? In this Instagram? Yeah, I did. Thanks for checking that out. Yeah, I was thinking I might do another one soon. That was fun. Uh, yeah, I got, I got a sleep mask. It's... Um, it's a pretty pretty cool sleep mask, I gotta say. If there if that's a thing, if there's ever yeah. a cool sleep mask, if there's such a thing as that, it's yeah. it's got weighted beads in it, so it feels like someone's hugging your face, and it really blocks out the light. So yeah, like in my apartment here we have big windows, so it gets really yeah. bright in the morning. So it really yeah. helps me to stay asleep, and it's comfortable. I, I'm the kind of guy where I'm a really light sleeper, so I sleep with earplugs every night and a sleep mask. Uh, just to block out any kind of sound. Yeah, light. that's the way I am too. Yeah, for sure. We said good. We just said goodbye to the toughest year. You were supposed to hit the road with Black Veil Brides. What What are the top things that got you through twenty twenty? Um. Yeah. Really, just uh, all the support from the fans. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it makes everything worth it. Even, the cool thing is that even though we can't be on the road touring, yeah, uh, we all have our own projects that we do on the side. You know, yeah. like J Jake's really active on Twitch. Andy's got his Andy Show podcast. Yeah, I uh, watch a CBC lot. CBC feeds raccoons. You know, yeah. <laughs> Jinx does compose compositions for films and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. And like, I've been uh, making YouTube videos for my channel. Yeah. We all have stuff that we do and there's yeah. just so much support from the fans uh, with everything we do in all aspects of our career. And on top of that, we also did have a pretty cool year, uh, even though we weren't being, being on the road together, but still yeah. like we were working on a new record. We re released Restitch These Wounds, which was huge. We yeah. recorded that, uh, a couple really successful live stream shows. We so there's definitely that a lot live. that happened. We watched the live stream concert and it was awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, we had a great time doing that. We hope we can do more in the future. Of course, the priority is touring, but if that can't happen, we're just going to keep uh, doing these live stream shows yeah. occasionally because I think they go over pretty well. I know you started playing guitar when you were 13. When I ask musicians what drew them to music, I always get so many different answers. So I'm curious, what, curious why do you think music became your passion? Uh, it, it's really hard to say. I think f it just connects with certain people for some reason. So whatever it is about the way I'm wired, I was just made to do this. And this yeah. is what I gravitated towards. Uh, but yeah, ever, ever since I got into it, it's really been my sole focus. P prior to discovering music at that young age, I went, I went through a, a series of hobbies. I, you know, I played hockey for a while. Mm -hmm. um, I went through like a skateboarding phase, I, um, lacrosse phase, mm -hmm. what else did I do, uh, snowboarded, you know, I did all kinds of stuff, all kinds yeah. of hobbies, karate, and nothing ever really stuck, I would always go on to the next thing, Yeah. like, oh, what's my thing this year, and then when I discovered music, of course, everyone's like, oh, here's his next phase, and then I'm still in that phase to this day. So, yeah.
In his new book, Andy said he always wanted to be the front man. Cece told me he loved banging on pots and pans from an early age. So why was it the guitar for you? Yeah, I did read that part in Andy's book, actually. That was really cool. Yeah. Because um, he actually started on bass, apparently. Yeah. He started playing bass, and then he was singing. Or I guess he always wanted to sing, but at first yeah. he would be like a singer and a bassist, sort of like yeah. Simmons. But yeah. yeah, with me, um, it was just when I listened to songs, that's what my ear gravitated towards was the riffs. Mm -hmm. You know, I've never been one to pay too much attention to lyrics in a song. Yeah. Or even the drum grooves. Uh, maybe now I do more, but at the time that I started when I was a teenager, it was all about the guitar riffs for me. And that was really what made up a good song for me. If it had a killer riff right off the bat, and I was into that song. So I just wanted to be able to create those sounds myself and play the riffs myself, pick up a guitar and hear back in black without having to put on a CD. That's what yeah. always was a cool thing for me. Tell me about your life growing up in Canada. Well, it was, it was great. Yeah, my, my family would go, go skiing and snowboarding every weekend. So that was pretty cool. Um, had, you know, lots of friends. I, I really enjoyed uh, going to school and seeing my friends every day. And yeah. Uh, eventually, when I was in grade seven, when I started playing music, I made a band with my best friends from school. And oh, we would really? talk about our band all the time. Yeah. And we would re rehearse at the drummer's house every Wednesday after school. And uh, it was some of the funnest times I've ever had. So, yeah, I got, I got no complaints about, about uh, growing up in Canada. It was great. I know you were inspired by AC, ACDC. What other bands did you listen to as a kid? Yeah, ACDC was my first favorite band, uh, you know, when I was, uh, at least when I started playing music. Yeah. Um, I, around that time, I was really into Led Zeppelin as well. I got Super into Nirvana too. Uh, Guess Who, it's a Canadian band. Um, I was really into Hinder also, Green Day. Um, let's see, Van Halen, Fleetwood Mac. Yeah, a lot of that classic rock stuff I really like. Yeah. Um, yeah. I read that you played your first professional gig at age 14. How did that come about and what was that like? Um, yeah, so I mean, I, right when I started playing, I just wanted to play live. And yeah. so it was with the, the band I'd previously mentioned, you know, yeah. that I made with my buddies from school. We were in grade seven and we would just learn songs and hopefully we, one day we'd play a show. And then after like a few months of playing, we weren't very good at all yet, but we're like, we got to go out there and play. And we just, we didn't really know how to book a show or anything. So we're like, you know what, we're just going to put on our own show in the garage here. And we just invited people and made kind of like a party, invited everyone to a rehearsal space and everyone came and watched. And that was really fun. That was our first time like playing in front of people. Uh, when we were 13 and then when we were 14 we our first gig at a venue this was actually at a bar in in our hometown it was called whiskey jack's pub and we were too young to get into a bar obviously but yeah we just wanted to like play so we called every bar in town and we told them the situation we we're like hey like we're underage can we just come in and play yeah. and finally one bar was like sure whiskey jack's pub they're like yeah you can come in and then you just have to leave right after and uh, yeah, I remember we, we drove there together. Uh, well, my friends, the drummer's dad gave us a ride and we all drove together and then we played. And the first song we played was Taking Care of Business, which is a, a fun song. And we also did like Bad Moon Rising by CCR. We did Crazy yeah. Train by Ozzy Osbourne. Yeah, I love uh, that. We did five songs in total. I can't remember what the other ones were now. But yeah, yeah it was just so much fun. And yeah. it was, there's some photos from that gig and it's just so cool to see my first time ever on stage. From there, we started playing in other parts around town, started getting booked into like coffee shops and stuff like that. Uh, some other party type events. And I was just hooked right away. You said when you were young, you always, you always dreamed of being on a tour bus. How does it compare to what you thought it would be? Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's, it's a very special feeling when your dreams become a reality. I, I just wanted to tour in a bus so bad. I remember going to concerts and seeing the bus parked out back and I'd be yeah. like, oh, what does it look like in there? You know, I just want to go inside and see what it's like. 
and really? yeah I'll, I'll never forget it like we had this run the book to the, with this artist I was working with at the time uh, a good friend of mine Sean Hook and I was talking to the tour manager and he and he was like yeah we're getting a bus for this this run I was like what we're doing a tour bus no way I didn't think that I didn't think that you know that was gonna be happening and then it did and I just remember like going into my bunk for the first time and hanging out in the lounge it was it was a dream come true it was you know something I'll never forget I don't even think I slept that night I was just so excited it's awesome well if I if I was on a tour bus I would probably not sleep as well as I would be <laughs> it's pretty exciting right yeah and you have a good degree in jazz guitar tell me about your college years yeah so right after high school I moved to Vancouver and I attended music college there and I did that for four years. And uh, yeah, I ba basically just studied a bunch of jazz songs and jazz yeah. theory and jazz harmony and jazz composition and everything related to jazz, uh, jazz history, music history, a lot of classical music wow, uh, joined into pretty, this as well. You're pretty, pretty talented. Yeah, it, it really helps me in, on a day-to-day -day basis every day, being able to analyze songs with with theory and it allows me to pick out songs by ear a lot quicker and learn stuff on the fly without having to read the music notation. Uh, another really important course through the program is ear training where we basically learn how to hear a song and just write out the chords on the fly. Yeah. So that's come in handy so many times. And uh, yeah, but I mean, my entire time at music school was really just a means to an end. I always had the goal of, you know, eventually touring on bigger yeah. tours. That's what I that's what I always wanted to do. So I I was really active in the local music scene while I was in school, you know. I wasn't just solely focused on school. Basically I would go to school in the day and then at night I would go out to show the network and give yeah. my business card to artists and bands and try and network. And I started playing a lot of gigs and eventually it came to the thing where like I'd be at school at eight in the morning all day. Then I'd go to my gig right after school. I'd play in a bar until like 1 a.m., come home, sleep for a couple hours, and then go right back to school the next day. And I would do that basically every night of the week. That's and pretty good. Yeah, I'd, you know, I'd really established myself as a, as a musician for hire in town. And I was playing with, you know, dozens and dozens of artists every year. And that eventually led me to play on bigger tours. And that led me to where I am today. That's amazing because I couldn't do that. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I feel like I missed out on a lot of the natural joys of life just because I was working so hard towards this goal. And, you know, there was a time where like I wouldn't even go on family vacations with my parents and stuff like that just because I was like, no, I got to stay and do these gigs. Or, you know, I would never, never once celebrated New Year's Eve with my friends or anything like that. Because I was always just, you know, working, trying to network and trying to eventually tour in stadiums. And that was always my goal. So, you know, to see it finally happen was yeah. awesome. And it felt like all the hard work had paid off. It kind of brings it to the next question. When you got the gig with Sean Hook in 2015, you said you learned every guitar part for all his songs and covers you even learned his vocal harmonies and keyboard parts where do you where did you get this amazing work ethic from um yeah actually that i i, you know, I feel like i've always been pretty good at knowing what needs to be done when you want to accomplish something like there's this saying i heard it's like when you when you really know exactly what you want to do yeah. when it's when it's right in your mind and you know exactly what you want to be doing it's almost painfully obvious what you have to do to get there and really what it comes down to is just doing the stuff that other people aren't willing to do you know there's so many guys who are competing for those types of gigs and i would bet that maybe half of those guys aren't willing to learn the vocal harmonies for those songs even though it wasn't yeah. asked of them so if you do that then that can put you that far ahead of all the competition right um and i i think a lot of this stems back to when I was 15, a, a, a friend of mine told me, he was like, he was trying to give me advice. And he was like, saying how the people who are at the top of their field and are really the best at everything they do, they have this work ethic where even though they're at the top, 
they're still working as hard as somebody who wants that goal, even though they've arrived. His example was like Michael Jordan, who would win the championship. Then the very next morning, he's back there on the court practicing his free throws. Yeah. Throws, right. You don't bask in any of that success. It's like you're always working harder than yeah. every single other person out there, even though you're at the top. So I think if you can apply that mentality to anything you're doing, um, then, yeah, that's, that's really a great way to succeed. Like if you go and play on – Form on the Grammys, for example. Yeah. The very next morning, be sitting down there practicing your instrument, analyzing the, the footage and seeing what you could have improved on. Like a lot of times I'll record myself at shows. I'll record the concert. I'll listen back and see what could sound better. What could I have done better? And uh, yeah, I think that's a great way to improve. That's so true. It's great that you make YouTube videos showing how play guitar for Pacific songs. I'm sure so many guitarists appreciate it. What made you want to do that? That, And do you think you'll ever teach professionally? Um, yeah, so I mean, I've been making YouTube videos for like almost 10 years, not really, but I was never really doing it too seriously until this year. This year, yeah. I really started uh, getting more into it. And I, I think it just came from the fact that I, I, would, I do watch a lot of YouTube. You know, I don't really watch much TV. When I, when I go to unwind or watch something to take my mind off of whatever, it's, it's mainly just like open up YouTube and see what video can come up. Because I like how short the clips are. You're not invested for like an hour long show. It's like, oh, I can just watch this for five minutes and then carry on with my day. So I, I really was drawn into YouTube that way. And I was like, oh, maybe I should try doing this myself. And it, it's fun, uh, just, I don't know, editing videos and trying to improve my, my, uh, my filming and, and, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, it's just something I really enjoy. I've, I've always, I've always liked that, that platform. So yeah, I, I enjoy it. And yeah, as far as teaching goes, I, I mean, I have taught a lot in the past. Um, I've never, I've never really like thought of it as my main thing. Right. I've always thought right. of myself as a touring musician, but yeah. yeah, there have been times where I've, you know, subbed in at music schools teaching for, for friends who oh, needed wow, me to fill really? in for them or, um, you know, taught the occasional guitar lesson through, through a Skype chat or whatever. So yeah, I have done a, a lot of that in the past, but it's, it's not something that I spend a lot of my focus on. I loved your video for CCB Box. Did you know he was offered a contract to be a rapper and I tried to get him to rap for my interview? Oh yeah. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed the video. Um, in case anyone's watching who isn't familiar, it's this video I made on YouTube where I made CC beatbox by grabbing syllables yeah. from his interviews and I just put them together to make it sound like he was spitting out a beat and then I played a yeah. bass solo over top. So yeah, anyways, now that we're all caught up, uh, glad you enjoyed it. I didn't know that he got offered a, a rap contract. Yeah, he was at a convention. Sure. He was a convention in Vegas and there was a, a professional rapper there and he started to go on stage and just rapped and then the manager of the rapper thought he was good than the rapper so he offered him a contract right on the spot. <laughs> I get, did he accept the contract? No. <laughs> Didn't accept it. <laughs> no. That's funny. Well I'm glad that he can be so faithful to the band Blackbird Rides. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I'll have to ask him about that. Yeah. So you were a BBB fan and now you're in the band. It's every musician's dream, but it's real for you. When did it really sink in and what was that? What was it like the first time you played with them? Yeah, it took a while to sink in. Just being in the room with the guys, it was yeah. It's kind of like, I don't know, it just didn't feel real. It felt like it was yeah. some kind of dream. Of, you know, the, the thought of, of joining Black Lives Rides was never something that I ever thought about happening, right? Because my career has always been playing for artists who hire people to be in their band, you know? Yeah. Like, uh, like uh, what's an example? Like Halsey, for example, needs a guitar player on tour. She'll hire yeah. somebody and often it's a different person every time. Yeah. So that's always been my career in terms of a band context. It's like they have their members. They don't need anybody else. 
Yeah. Then, so that's why I never thought of it. It never for once crossed my mind. And then, yeah, you know, a position became available and I was granted the opportunity and it took some time for me to really get used to the, the just the idea of being in a band, never mind that it's Black Veil Bride. Yeah. But yeah, it's a cool position to be in, right? They have uh, fans all over the world. Yeah. They have a 10 plus year career of bunch of successes, you know, too many to really list. So, I, I, you know, I feel really happy to be a part of it. It's cool. Your first album with BBB was a remake of the first album written 10 years ago. How, is it, how does it feel to be making new music now with the band? Um, yeah, it's very cool to be able to, you know, have the responsibility to help carry this torch. That is the legacy of Blackfield Brides. Yeah. They have uh, su such a such a wonderful list of accomplishments, and it's a privilege to be be uh, you know issued that responsibility to be one of the five members who are going to carry this legacy forward into this new decade. And I think we've done a great job of doing that so far. The band is at a better place uh, than it's been in the last couple of years. You know, it's certainly resurrected from not doing too much. You know, a lot of people are doing solo projects in the band or venturing off into other parts of music and now it's cool to see everything come back together and we just can't wait to get back out and tour uh, all this new stuff that we've been working on. When you're not playing music I like I know you like to sculpt how did you get interested in that? Yeah I do like to sculpt um, so I, I was in Paris in 2018 I went to the Louvre Museum where they have a bunch of famous sculptures there mm -hmm. and I just spent hours looking at these sculptures I loved how realistic you could make a piece of stone look it looked yeah like, he, like all these sculptures they look like human beings who are painted white like it's so incredible yeah. like how can anyone do that so I was like naturally I was like I want to try and do that so I just bought yeah. some stone and started sculpting and it's been a really fun hobby of mine that I, I really enjoy doing yeah I saw your the um eagle and I really liked it thank you yeah it was fun to make a lot of people don't know this, but what, the beak actually broke off in the middle of the sculpting process. Really? I was sculpting on my balcony and I dropped it. It only fell like this far and it broke and it, I dropped it, it cracked. The beak came right off and I was like, oh my God, I was freaking out. I looked into it and apparently you can glue them back together. They have a special kind of glue. So I glued the beak back on, sanded it around the crack so you can't even Is tell. Is it like crazy glue or something? It's called two-part epoxy which is a solution mixed up of two different components that creates a really strong uh, glue. I never heard of that. Yeah, it works. <laughs> which bands do you listen to when you're not, when you're relaxing? What helps you? I've been listening to a lot of Weekend lately. Yeah. Um, a lot of Khalid, a lot of Pearl Jam lately as well. Yeah, that's that's what I've been into mostly over the, the last few months. Yeah. But I don't listen to too much stuff outside of what I'm doing. I, you know, I spend like 10 hours a day listening to recording songs or listen, learning songs or, uh, you know, editing songs or whatever. So after the, after listening to music all day at, when I'm working, it's rare that I'll go and put something else on after that you know because i kind of just need to give my ears a bit of a rest yeah but yeah you know th those would be the bands that i'm into these days i follow your lovely wife rita on instagram she posted she asked you to share a cab years ago what's the story behind that yeah i know she's great um and yeah thanks for uh you know following her on on instagram she's she's super awesome uh yeah so that would have been the story of how we met which was uh many, many years ago now. Was, I, I, I keep forgetting how long it was exactly. It was just over five years now, I guess. And we were both at a house party. And uh, you know, we, we realized we lived in the same part of town. So we split a cab back to North Vancouver and we exchanged numbers in the cab. And then uh, you know, I texted her the next day and I was like, hey, we should meet up. And then we just started dating after that. So that's how we met. Pretty romantic. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, I'm sure your fans everywhere loved more and hear, learning more about you. So thanks again for this interview. I'm looking forward to the new music and seeing you out on tour as soon as possible. 
Hey, thanks so much for having me. It's uh, been a pleasure chatting with you. I hope we can do it again soon.